Welcome to Karen's Lab. As I told you, the goal of these videos is to challenge you to be an innovator, but we have to give you the right tools. You have to know your science before you can invent something. You have to know how it works to make it better. Let's just start this series with some basic science, states of matter and phase transitions. How many states of matter exist? In everyday life, we see four, solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. But we also have others that occur at very, very extreme temperatures, such as both Einstein condensate, and we have some others that are theoretical states of matter. Let's write that on the board so you don't forget. If we rank them according to temperature, we have that both Einstein occurs at the lowest temperature, and then as we increase temperature, we have solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Plasma is not only restricted to very high temperatures, it can also occur under the effect of electric fields, such as this one. Aside from the electric field, the easiest way to rank states of matter is according to temperature. So what is temperature? Easy, temperature is the measure of heat. But what is heat? Heat is energy, the motion of the atoms. Let's pretend each one of these plastic balls is an atom. In most Einstein, the movement is extremely restricted. There is basically no movement. In solids, they're organized, there's a little movement, there's rotation among the bonds, the molecules. There's just a little movement, but you cannot really see the movement. Solids have internal order, so that's why you cannot see me. The internal order of the atoms doesn't allow light uh, to pass through. Just imagine that I make a wall out of Legos, like this one. There's a lot of order. In liquids, there's more movement. Let's pretend these are atoms in a liquid, so there is some movement, and light can go through. So that's why you can see inside a swimming pool. Glasses, for example, they're, they're hard, so you might think of them as solids. In reality, those are called frozen liquids, because internally they don't have a lot of order, so the light can go through. When the atoms are in the solid state, they use very little space. All of these atoms can fit in this container. When they're in the liquid state, they use a little bit more space. What happened in the gas? Now we use all of the space. The atoms in the gas state, they're undergoing violent collisions. So they're like this one. So that's why light can go through. That's why I can see you. That's why you can see me. Because the light passes in between the atoms. If the atoms in the air or in the gas state were nicely organized, it would be very hard to see anything. You will not be able to see your phone, you will not be able to see TV, you will not be able to see yourself in the mirror. So it's very good that the atoms are like this in the gas state. We said that in solids, the atoms don't move much. And in gases, they move a lot. So it's just like you, you go to school, when you're in the classroom, you should behave as a solid. When you're outside in recess, you should behave as a gas. You can just run around the playground. But when your teacher calls you, you know how to behave as a solid because you can listen, right? So when they tell you, stop, you stop. Are you guys ready to learn? But the atoms can't stop. Atoms don't have ears to listen. So we can use science to help the atoms behave. Let's do an exciting experiment. Let's inflate these balloons. This is not easy.
the last one. Okay, so I finished. I have all of these balloons. What are the balloons filled with? Yes, you're right, they're filled with air. And air is a gas, so they're using a lot of space. There are not many atoms in here, but they're using a lot of space. Just like the plastic balls that I threw around the room. Now we're gonna try to have these atoms behave as a solid. That means that they will use a lot less volume. We're gonna try to fit all of these balloons in this container. Do you think they will fit? This container is filled with liquid nitrogen, so it's really, 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 really cold. Minus 312 degrees Fahrenheit. Water freezes at 32. This is minus 312. Let's see now what happens when we start putting these balloons inside that liquid nitrogen. Do you think all of them will fit? What happened? Can you explain what happened? I think they will fit. Let's try. Let's try another one. Let's see how many we can put in there. Let's try as many as we can. I think that's enough. This one doesn't seem to fit. Oh wait, I think it does. I think we can try one more. Oops, we have one more in here. What happened to the balloons? Do you hear them pop? What happened is exactly what I told you. They were in the gas state, but they don't have ears to listen. So we had to use very, very cold temperatures to kind of freeze them down. So basically, now they came all together and they're using very little space. So instead of doing this, now they quiet down and they came together. Can we call them back to recess? Let's try. Okay, let's go back to recess. Okay, so what happened? Now they're back in recess. Now they're using a lot of space again. We said that liquid nitrogen was at minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. Post Einstein occurs at very, very, very low temperatures. That's very close to absolute zero. Absolute zero is zero Kelvin. In Fahrenheit, this will be minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit. Solids, for example, in the case of water, occur at less than 32 degrees. Liquid, for water, occurs above 32, but below 212. And gas, for the case of water, occurs above 212. Plasma, as I said, can be thousands of degrees or it can happen with um, high electric fields. Now let's look at phase transitions. Solid to liquid, it's melting. That's when you have ice, now it's water. Liquid to gas, 
evaporation. Gas to plasma ionization. Plasma to gas deionization. Gas to liquid condensation. And liquid to solid freezing. Are these all the phase transitions that we can have? How about solid to gas and gas to solid? Solid to gas will be sublimation and gas to solid will be deposition. We work out some fun experiments, but remember, it's not just doing experiments for the sake of having fun. We have to learn to. So here now you have your technical vocabulary. You learn some new words and you learn what they mean. So now, what can you do with that knowledge? Start looking around you and see what it is that you can do. There are many exciting applications that happen with phase transitions. For example, now we can deposit metals or ceramics on plastics at room temperature. And that is good for what? Well, that could be good for flexible solar cells, for example, where you have a plastic substrate and then you have the conductive layers on top of it. And those layers are usually ceramics of metals. But now we can deposit at room temperature so the plastic will not degrade. I'm pretty sure you can come up with something. Let me know what you come up with.